new language model was released that could potentially have the same impact as GPT-4. While this may seem like a bold statement, recent developments from major companies such as Apple, Amazon, Britain and Beidou suggest that it may indeed be a significant breakthrough. In the following discussion, I will explain what this language model is and why it is so significant. Stanford's alpaca model is making waves with its surprising ability to behave similarly to OpenAI's Text DaVinci 3, despite being smaller and significantly cheaper to reproduce at under $600. This is a significant achievement, since just a few weeks ago, predictions estimated that the cost of GPT-3 would not drop to this level until 2030. However, if Stanford's claims are true, then 99% of the cost reduction has occurred within just five weeks of this prediction being published, rather than over the course of eight years. As AI researcher Eliza Yadowski notes, I don't think people realize what a big deal it is that Stanford retrained a LAMA model by cheaply fine-tuning it. The implications of this breakthrough could be far-reaching and transformative for the world of AI. Stanford claims that its alpaca model performs comparably to DaVinci 3 or GPT 3.5. While I will analyze and test this claim, it's worth noting that alpaca's low cost raises the question of how it can compete with ChatGPT. The answer lies in Meta's recent open sourcing of their Llama models, which Stanford utilized to train their own models. Specifically, Stanford used the weakest of these open source models, the 7 billion parameter one, and then recruited GPT 3.5 to train that Meta model. This was accomplished using a technique called self-instruct, which I will explain in more detail shortly. I delved into the literature to locate the original paper on self-instruct, which was published in December of last year. Here's a quick summary of how it works. You begin with a set of human-made examples of prompts and outputs. These are then fed into the language model, which generates thousands of additional instances of the same type. After filtering out the poor quality examples, the good ones are returned to the language model. This process helps the model understand the instructions better, and as a result, it can produce thousands more of examples. The paper notes that this technique is almost human annotation free, and it's worth noting that it only leaves a 5% gap behind Instruct GPT, which is phenomenal. So what is Instruct GPT? It's a breakthrough that led to the development of ChatGPT. If you look at the original GPT-3 model and provide it with a prompt such as explain the moon landing to a six-year-old in a few sentences, you would get a nonsensical output. However, after several months of human training, through reinforcement learning with human feedback, it was able to follow instructions much better and produce a coherent output. But this process requires extensive human labeling and ranking of outputs from best to worst, which is time consuming and expensive. Stanford's self-instruct technique represents a significant breakthrough in reducing these costs. To summarize, Stanford utilized an open source meta model, which was trained by GPT 3.5. Essentially, one advanced model was teaching another. As Yadowski has pointed out, these models have enough pseudo intelligence that they can look at other models and learn from them. It's worth noting that OpenAI may have even predicted the possibility of this breakthrough in their terms of services which prohibits the use of the output to develop models that compete with open AI. Stanford has acknowledged that this breakthrough could make it easier for more people, including bad actors, to create new low-cost models. Furthermore, Yudowski suggests 
that one of the reasons ChatGPT and GPT-4 are so good is due to their proprietary data, which was supposed to give them a competitive edge. However, the development of Alpaca and self-instruct technique have shown that people can now create similar models at a much lower cost and potentially threatening the competitive mode of these proprietary data-based models. Before I proceed to demonstrate our Alpaca in action, let me briefly summarize how it works. The self-instruct process is used to generate thousands of high-quality instructions following examples which are similar to those produced by ChatGPT or GPT 3.5. Stanford then employed an open source model, specifically the weakest of the LAMA models, and trained it using these examples, resulting in the development of PACA. So let's take a look at PACA in action and compare it to ChatGPT and GPT 4. Just to highlight an interesting point, the training of the LAMA model using those 52,000 examples only took three hours and cost less than $100. Now, onto the first example, which I did not create myself. I found it in an academic paper linked to the description. The task involves comprehending complex and conflicting scenarios applying appropriate legal precedents and selecting the correct explanation. The correct answer, which you can read through, if you wish, is B. Packer is capable of answering this question accurately about 80% of the time. By clicking the Generate button, you'll find that the answer D is occasionally provided, but around 80% of the time, Packer generates the correct answer B. As for ChatGPT, every time I've tested it, it has provided the incorrect answer of C. Shockingly, even GPT-4 gets it wrong and selects C. Now, let's not get ahead of ourselves. I'm not claiming that Packer is better than or even on par with GPT-4 or ChatGPT. It's not. However, keep in mind that it only has 7 billion parameters and costs $600. Take, for example, the question provide an example of an animal that begins with the same letter as the capital city of France. Packer's response was elephant, which is perplexing. In comparison, ChatGPT provides lion and GPT-4 suggests ferret. However, Packer has failed in another question, such as this math problem, which ChatGPT and GPT-4 can solve uniformly, but Packer gets it wrong every time. So it's not better than those models, but by the end of this video, you will understand why it's groundbreaking. It fares better in simple addition and subtraction, and it can generate poems, solve some very cool common sense problems, and produce literally analogies. However, I want to emphasize three points. First, it was trained using the weakest of the Llama open source models. They could have opted with the 65 billion parameter model, albeit a slightly higher cost. I am certain the outcomes would have been even more remarkable. Secondly, the examples used to train were generated by the DaVinci 3 model, which gets them back roughly $0.03 per 1000 tokens. However, as of 48 hours ago, they could have used the GPT-4 API at a very similar cost. Hence, it wasn't the best open source model, nor was it trained by the best GPT model. I am genuinely interested in what would have happened had it been trained using the 65 billion parameter model through a GPT-4 API. Maybe someone will do, perhaps even this week. Before we move on to Apple, Amazon, Britain and Baidu, I want to emphasize again how incredible it is that this breakthrough was achieved for only $600 or less. Stanford even admits that they were training efficiencies that they could have implemented, such as using H100 GPUs, which would have further reduced the cost. The question now is, with it being so easy and cheap to replicate larger models, what will happen when Apple release their own large language model? 
Just yesterday, the New York Times reported that Apple is indeed working on one and they have more financial resources than any other company mentioned. Amazon also stated that they've been developing similar tech to ChatGPT for a long time and they had a model called Alexa TM as early as mid last year that outperformed GPT-3 and although we demonstrated their early bot today, we can't verify its performance since they didn't release a paper. We can't forget Google either, who just announced their Palm API two days ago. What would have happened if Stanford's model had used that instead? We will find out soon enough. To start with, one notable observation and two questions arise from this development. The fact that these models have become so cheap and so quickly is disrupting the economics of large language models. The questions to consider are, will the drive to produce cutting edge models at companies like Google and Microsoft disappear now that anyone can easily replicate them? And will these companies react by closing off the models and preventing future APIs like GPT-5? These questions remain unanswered and as nation states such as Britain spends hundreds of millions to build models like Brit GPT, are companies and governments now in a war on two fronts competing against each other and those trying to cheaply imitate their models. If you found this video informative please leave a like and comment and have a great day.